sign that they're getting somewhere. And that sign, they're getting somewhere. And that sign would probably have to be tanks surrounding the presidential palace and President Mubarak being told by the army that it's time to go. Because at the moment he's not, he's not prepared to listen to anybody else. Is it? That, that's the only way this is going to... I mean, I mean, correctly for these people. I mean, David, to be frank, I mean, it's like, it's, I mean, they are there. Nobody knows if they are going to be there again tomorrow. I mean, in another day, I mean, Hello? put the formula of this. I was telling my children the other day about a, a time when there was a standoff, in a sense similar to this. Um, in Panama mm -hmm. in the 1980s when the Americans went in because they didn't like what Noriega was doing as a drug runner this is the you know, the Indian dictator and they lost him for a while until eventually he, he announced that he was inside the Vatican Embassy in Panama City they couldn't get him out because it's the territory of another country what do you do how do you get him out mm -hmm. and you may remember that they ended up playing some of the worst music that's ended playing some of the worst music that's ever been written for loudspeakers and making such a terrible noise outside his bedroom window that yep. in the end he said I'd rather go to prison than face this and it was that kind of standoff wasn't it mm -hmm. and, and if the man refuses to get you know, I'm, let's say, I'm being facetious but you know what I mean yeah I know I what do you mean it has happened probably probably the music the music would be some phone calls something going on as I said to you we are focusing on Tahrir Square, but I'm seeing that the crucial and the vital decision making is not going into Tahrir Square in Burma. It's you you might like to listen to one of our correspondents when it comes to sort of the army and uh, the people on the streets because uh, you've been witnessing the army going into action in what way? Yeah, the situation developing right in front of me here. What happened is the army um, soldiers went and arrested five, I can count, of the pro-Mubarak supporters that were on the 6th of October bridge. But to take them into the holding place, which is near the Egyptian Museum, they actually have to take them very close to the democracy uh, protesters. They have to take them basically um, on the outskirts of where they were cordoning off. So as they were cordoning off, so as the army are escorting those five um, uh, pro Mubarak supporters, the other uh, demonstrators are basically trying to attack them. And when we're seeing a little bit of a situation whereby the army are, are running towards those uh, who have been arrested to try and reinforce another line around them and, and try and take them into their um, detention area. So uh, definitely a lot of um, tension around this particular area. And I think questions to be asked why this, uh, they have to take those particular men through this way uh, into the detention facility rather than taking them through a different way that wouldn't have meant uh, uh, arousing all of these uh, pro-democracy demonstrators just near Tahrir Square. I think uh, Shreen, anything else? Oh, beg your pardon. Anything else you want to add at the moment? That's the situation right here. I'll, I'll keep you up to date. Thank you very much indeed. Slip of the tongue. Well, we can name Abdullah al Ashal, former Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, Professor of Political Science at the American University. Uh, uh, professor, thanks for coming on the line. You're just back from Tahrir Square. What's the atmosphere like, in your opinion? Yes, I think they have... They are currently some stopping of the lead President Mubarak. But I think that the lead President Mubarak is now giving some difficulty among the Egyptian people. Some of them are sort of feeling that they shouldn't step down now. He can continue with the reforms that were proposed. Mr. Elisha, I'm going to stop you there because we're going to try and re-establish a line where we can hear properly what it is you're trying to tell us because unfortunately uh, the comms, the telecoms between you and us at the moment, not that good. Right, I'm going to run through some international re reaction, starting with Ban Ki-moon. Regrettably, the situation during the last few days have taken a deeply troubling turn. The violence and intimidation that should stop. In particular, the restrictions on the international media, journalists and human rights groups 
are utterly unacceptable. Freedom of expression and assembly are basic human rights. One of my chief goals right now is to make sure we keep the lines of communication open. I've talked to my counterpart a couple of times, uh, and also that we've got uh, our military ready a couple of times, uh, and also that we've got uh, our military ready should any kind of response or support be required. They are concerned about where this goes uh, and, and uh, how contagious it is and what it means in each country. What seems to be uh, happening is that he's moving towards some kind of national dialogue. So, as you would expect, we've been urging the continuation of support for people on the streets to keep people safe, to make sure that the violence does not break out again, that the army plays its proper role, and to urge them to continue in this move towards what we call transition. He lost a battle, but not the war. Well, as we take in these pictures from Liberation Square, six minutes before curfew, which is formed and from hardly a spare bit of ground to be seen. The square the and the surrounding streets from, uh, entirely uh, filled with people. His, uh, and as far as we can understand from our correspondents on the ground, at the moment, very little likelihood of these people having to face off with their rivals as happened so terribly two nights ago. Well, as we listen to the reactions of some of those people on the international stage, Catherine Ashton, the EU foreign policy chief amongst them. Uh, we can bring in our correspondent, Lawrence Lee, who's in Brussels. There's been a big gathering there of a lot of people.